We are live. Little Locked On 49ers Winky Wednesday. Going to talk today about Trey Lance. Maybe the, this is the opportunity Trey Lance needed for the team to start rallying around him. Some of the negative comments that are happening and, and some of the negative stories that clearly the team thinks are kind of BS, uh, judging by a recent social media post. And we'll check back in on our all-time 49ers draft. Who were the snubs? And we'll let you in the chat decide who drafted the best team. All that coming up on today's Locked On 49ers. <laughs> You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers, Brian Peacock, Eric Crocker, and Nicholas Winkler with you here on a Winky Wednesday episode. Last week, it was just me and Wink. Now, we got Croc back in the house, so all three of us are going to talk a little bit about our all-time 49ers draft that we did throughout June, who were the snubs, and we'll let you guys in the chat and uh, maybe some folks on Twitter vote on who had the best roster, and I think we all know it was team peacock but we'll get into that mm. in, in just a little bit here first of all it is a winky wednesday so i've got to bring nick on our very special guest properly nicholas winkler come on down how are we doing mr winkler i i heard there's some covid in your household i hope you're uh, away from that and and everyone's feeling okay yeah everybody's healthy now so that that's the good thing you know it was it was short-lived uh the the uh, scary part of it but no everything's good my son's living his best life he's getting to play video games all day hang out with his dad so I, i'm not complaining yeah <laughs> yeah that's fantastic i mean that he's is getting really good at mario which oh. just makes me so proud okay it's classic mario we're we talking mario kart oh yeah no no everything i've just introduced okay. him to mario super mario brothers mario 64 mario galaxy like i'm really immersing him in mario knowledge croc do you think that wink could beat you as easily in Mario Kart as he could in Madden. Well, he, he losing both, if, if we're being honest. Like, listen, okay. Mario Kart in my household, it gets mm -hmm. it gets real serious. We have it Same. on the Nintendo 64. It it gets real. So uh, I'm coming at mm. you, man. I'm I'm Let's using go. uh uh Yoshi and hey, uh, yeah. Sometimes I use Princess, sometimes I use yeah. Princess, but yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm with you. I, 64 is the best one by far uh we actually have it on the switch and it has a lot of like the throwback stages and stuff and so i teach my kids like oh yeah okay look there's a hole inside that mountain like you could jump through it if right, you use yeah. a mushroom and oh yeah you gotta you teach them all the little tricks you guys are in trouble if you have to play me on any of the stages with the shortcut because i'm, I'm getting, oh. those, getting those every time all right uh maybe a little mario soccer too dominating that as well if we're, if we're just mario doing tennis the whole mario golf if yeah. it's got mario let's go <laughs> real golf croc would definitely be third in real golf I've seen yeah. his hack. I've seen his hack. <laughs> you might pass me now, though, Peacock. You're playing a lot. I'm, I'm not getting out much. It's straightening out. Dude, I, I kind of lost the slice. I'm feeling good about life right now. I'm still not playing well, but uh, I'm not, like, killing people two fairways over anymore with that massive slice I had. So that's that's good, hitting it long and straight. Um, let's talk about the 49ers building a little chemistry right now. And I, there was a social media post today. It got really got me thinking. It was from Brandon IU, who has an opportunity to have a huge year three as Debo Samuel had a huge year three last year with his new quarterback that he seems to have a rapport with in, in Trey Lance. They've done a lot of working out in the offseason. He posted on Instagram today a video of him catching some balls from Trey Lance, who, by the way, was literally throwing the ball through the clouds. Did you see that? The ball was like yeah. disappearing into the clouds and then came out of the clouds, then back into the clouds. And he's throwing bombs out there. And it showed a couple of nice, you know, throws and, and a couple of catches by Brandon Ayuk. But the caption was the best part the, in the comments. The caption was um, uh, me and Trey getting some work. I don't, even, I, I don't even have it in front of me. I don't remember what it was. I, I, I have it. You have it? Okay, have what was the exact caption? The caption from Brandon Ayuk is, the only three throws from today because – oh, man, hold on. It cut out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me go back to it. But it was along the lines of – Yeah. Let's see. Okay, here we go. The only three throws from the day, his arm got fatigued after that. Love it. It's so funny. Love it. First, because someone, uh, and shout out to the listener, I'm not sure who it was, tagged us. That's when I first saw it just a little while ago. And I went and looked, and it's like firsthand knowledge about Trey's arm fatigue. And I was like, oh, what's this? He's like, oh, no, a teammate talking about his arm fatigue. And I looked at it, I was like, oh, he's totally being sarcastic about it. And um, I don't know if everyone really picked up on that initially, but you know who did pick up on it is his teammates. And George Kittle, 
some other guys laughing, applauding the the caption. And it just goes to show that they're like, this is ridiculous. And I really think this is an opportunity for Trey Lance to show because he's not, you know, buckling under any of this pressure. He didn't through his entire rookie year. One of the things I think the 49ers loved about him was how he carried himself, his character. He seems to have proven that, if nothing else. And then with all these stories, like everyone's kind of from the outside, especially trying to like bring them down. There's these weird mm-hmm. stories, people whispering, even maybe someone whispering from inside the building, some ex coaches maybe that didn't believe in him. And you see stuff like this, and his teammates maybe starting to rally around him. Maybe this is what Trey Lance needed is a little adversity to show, like, what's up with this? And the teammates rallying around, I was like, no, this is our guy. And so maybe that's what he needed this offseason to come into camp where it's like an us against the world sort of a thing for these 49ers. I think that's going to be an important thing for him, right, is to get that locker room because Jimmy G had that locker room. He, those guys loved him. He was a leader for those men. And, you know, if Trey Lance steps up, and this, like you said, this could be a perfect opportunity, you know, for him to the, the guys to kind of rally behind him and be like, look, this is all a bunch of baloney, like, you know, and laugh at it and just kind of move forward together. I'll tell you what the best part about that video was. Trey Lance with the Louis Vuitton shorts on. Woo, big money. <laughs> Big money. I don't know. I don't, has he, he's only a year or two guy. He's got two starts under his belt. He's played 20 games since high school. Is he like, has he earned the right to be working out in Louis Vuitton? Is he on that level right now? Or is he trying to get, the, is he trying to, to show before he earns the dough? Uh, you know, I think he's earned, he's earned the money. And it says, okay, I always talk about this, man. Like you create your value and yeah. whatever he did at North Dakota state, Create the value for someone to take him number three overall and give him 32 million guaranteed or however much it mm-hmm. was. So he, he earned it. He earned it yeah. from what he did and what he did. Let's not downplay it. I mean, 17 and 0 at North Dakota State. It is a powerhouse. Went undefeated as a redshirt freshman. Took him to the national title game. The weather conditions were terrible. Said, so you know what? We might not be, we not, we might not be able to throw all that well in this, but just I'm going to put y'all on my back. We're going to run through this. So uh, he earned it, man. He earned the Louis Vuitton shorts. <laughs> you either have swag or you don't. He clearly does, right? Yeah, he got it. Yeah, you can't teach that. Like, I'm not going to roll out in Louis Vuitton shorts right now. I got shorts. And they're purple. I got shorts on. They're probably the cheapest shorts I could find at whatever store I was at. Ain't no Louis yeah. Vuitton happening over here because uh, I haven't earned the dough yet. I got a two-pack <laughs> Puma from Costco. I'm wearing one of them right now. I moved back. Locked on money. You with that locked on money, you can't you can't get the Louis Vuitton shorts. Look, look, that locked on money is is wrapped up in me moving back to the Bay Area. Everything else is on the cheap for from here on out. (laughs) (laughs) That uh yeah, that 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 cost of living out here is hitting me, although I do Mm -hmm. like the 65 degree weather when it was uh 104 in the in the middle of California the other day. Um what's the what's the weather like in Arkansas right now, Croc? Oh, you know, it's hot. Uh 90 five to a hundred degrees and when you look at the like heat index or whatever it would say like feels like 110 so yeah it's pretty steaming i've been having to take the kids swimming every day that is steaming you even got the long sleeve on right now you're trying to get i that. always wear the long sleeves though so okay okay i mean crocs from stockton though we grew up with this heat we know yeah, all man, about this you know come on but yeah. I also live in the 65 degree now as well, Peacock, because <laughs> I did I, I did put my time in in the heat. And as soon as it was my opportunity to get out of the heat, I, I did that. Yeah, you earned it. You earned yeah, it. Yeah, there you go. Rick says real but, dads buy clothes at Costco. Boom. Rick gets it. This shirt right here, Walmart. They had them on sale. They had I bought like four of these long sleeves. Uh, it's dry fit material. Uh, $11 each. I was really excited about that. Sw- someone who loves wearing long sleeves. Yeah, it, it for me, like... A lot of the clothes I have, I feel like I earned them because I, you know, went to a, a concert, went to a show. You buy a, you buy a t-shirt, a concert tee, right? This is like an old softball tee from my team when I was living in Davis. Shout out to the yeah. Souls. I hope they're doing okay without me, you know. So I like to wear that gear that you earn a little bit too, and it, it free and giveaway it comes cheaper and it makes you feel good about it. Yeah. All right, here we go. Trey tendonitis. <laughs> the Greek name. Oh, I don't know what that even means, but I like it. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of good comments here. Uh, I just want to shout out Cody real quick. He says podcast listener for a year. So first time I've caught a live chat, totally can't waste my morning drive tomorrow though. Um, yeah, that's, that's tough. We've heard that a few times for people who catch a live and they're like, I'm going to leave the live, want to say hi, but I do want to listen to the podcast in the morning. Cause that's my ritual. So I understand that mm. too. as well. So, uh, and, and I appreciate anybody catching our podcast 
any way that they do. Love it. Okay, uh, next, uh, let's talk a little bit more about this. What's in the chat? I saw a couple questions already in the chat. Uh, somebody says it's been 106 in Utah where 49ers girl is. That's rough, man. I thought Oof. Utah was supposed to be cold and, and snowy. And you, I don't know about it's the It's a valley, though. I think anywhere you have valleys, you're going to get that heat. That's some serious seasons. If you got snow yeah. and then you got 106, that's some extreme right there. Hmm. Here's one really quick. I can't even pronounce the name, but it says, uh, went to COS, then back to the Bay 2. Had to get out of there. Okay, COS. College of the Sequoias? Is that what we're talking about here? Okay, uh, Sequoias. I played against them in junior college. Did you? Yeah, I, I went to JC College of Sequoias for one semester. Then went up to Butte College. Was uh, classmates with Aaron Rodgers. That's Taught right. Everything he knew. He went over to Cal, became a uh, first-round draft pick. <laughs> he owes you a lot. Yeah, he does. I, I might. I I could have sat next to him in the class. Would have had no idea. Right. No idea. I was blown away when I saw a guy from Chico, California, that went to Butte College, that was a draft prospect at Cal. I was like, "What the hell? How'd that happen? How's that even possible?" Shout out to Aaron. He's Rogers. done all right for himself. All right. Uh, I've got a. Uh, I've got a scenario. Speaking of Aaron Rodgers, I've got a Jimmy Garoppolo scenario. I want to talk about on the other side here, and uh, we'll get into the chat a little bit, and then we'll talk about who won the all-time 49ers draft but first i want to let the folks out there know about dave and if you don't know dave maybe you should because uh dave is dave can help you if you are let's say you're living paycheck to paycheck right you're struggling to make ends meet you don't have that podcast money like croc does it can be really stressful when unexpected expenses come up now dave can help get you out of a pinch when you really need it dave is a banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your bank, buy a gift, uh, catch up on bills, whatever you need it to be. You can finally tackle those expensive uh, expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. There's no interest, no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app and uh, gotten that financial relief that they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch, need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now. That's Dave, D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve member FDIC. How about this, guys, for a Jimmy Garoppolo scenario? Jimmy G. Gets released, traded, whatever this year. Maybe, maybe, maybe the 49ers are able to facilitate a trade. And I've heard, uh, what's the latest team? The, the Houston Texans. I think Mike Florio said that he, uh, it, not a report, but he, he's, he says he believes his, his mm. pick for his prediction for Jimmy Garoppolo to get traded is the Houston Texans. We kind of forgot about the Houston Texans. That was a team we thought about early. Davis Mills, we thought maybe not, but maybe if he's released or who knows, maybe, it, maybe if it comes cheap. Um, I still think it's the Browns. They still have the cap space, even though they've spent so much on quarterbacks and have the weirdest quarterback situation. And obviously we're going to have to find out what happens with, uh, with the, uh, the Deshaun Watson stuff. And by the way, there is a report here from Florio pro football talk that says that they expect the week of the 25th. So somewhere around mm. the 25th for that decision to come from the hearings right now going on with Deshaun Watson. And the timing of that is interesting because the day after that, Tuesday, the 25th is a Monday, Tuesday, the 49ers report to camp. Uh, most teams by Wednesday, I think the Cleveland Browns Wednesday, the 27th report to camp. So maybe there's 24 hours between when that decision is levied. And if it is a year or that indefinite suspension, maybe then we'll find out about Jimmy Garoppolo potentially getting traded to the Browns. And, and I'm sure they've got things figured out before that. You know, in this scenario, we're going to do this. The Browns probably already know. Look, if it's a year, we've already talked to the 49ers. We're going to do something with Jimmy uh, or we're going to go this other direction. Or if it's six games, we're going to go Brissett. Or if it's eight, ten games, we're going to go Brissett still. You know, they've probably got those things all figured out. Maybe all this is lined up and we'll find out about it later. But it's interesting that that's the week and the league, it sounds like, is trying to get this done right before camp. So we might have some action, like literally right before everyone's reporting to training camp. So, um, but let's say it is Cleveland or whatever. And Jimmy Garoppolo gets traded and Jimmy plays the year in Cleveland. And if he takes a pay cut, maybe he has a, you know, an agreement to 
that, that the team can't franchise tag him. So he has an opportunity to be a, a pure free, free agent going into the next year. And Jimmy can make some money if he's healthy and has a good year wherever he plays. What about Aaron Rodgers retires? Jimmy Garoppolo then, as a free agent, goes and signs with the Green Bay Packers. So that way the Packers can finally beat the 49ers in the playoffs. What do you think? <laughs> Well, my response to that is, I don't know if it's Jimmy Garoppolo, the reason why the 49ers beat the Packers in the playoffs. If, yeah, I one mean, game where he threw eight wasn't. passes. He threw right. eight passes, and you ran for like 300 yards with Raheem Mostert. Well, who knows? Maybe, the next time, maybe. it was a blocked field goal and a blocked punt, one return for mm -hmm. a touchdown. Ward and Willis. They might have to trade for Debo Samuel as well. There we go. That yeah, is. Yeah, <laughs> floor is a good coach, you know, from the Shanahan tree. So. You should put Debo at quarterback. I think Jordan Love just flipped over a table somewhere when you said that. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I have no idea what to think about Jordan Love. I know. I don't either. It seems like such a weird that. pick. Yeah. What? Well, it keeps getting weirder. You listen to everyone. It sounds like he's just not good. But my, my issue with that is he just really hasn't had the opportunity. And look who he's playing behind. So I think there are a lot of people, almost like you know Trey Lance last year, you just, oh, he, he can't play because he's not good enough. It's like, well, he has a Hall of Famer in front of him who's been like back-to-back -back league MVP. Like, you, know, you can't just... You can't just move him out the way. So mm -hmm. I don't know. In his limited time, I don't think it's been great, but still hasn't had like a true opportunity to like, work through mistakes, go right. in with the game plan in multiple games in a row where he is the guy. It's it's a very difficult situation that they've put him in. Not bad, though, well, backup quarterback, but nobody wants to be a backup quarterback. No, and it just doesn't look great for him either because he's stepping into the same offense with the same players that Aaron Rodgers has been playing with, and he's not putting up good numbers. And like you said, yeah, he probably hasn't had the, the time to to really implement you know his style of offense for whatever week that he's he's played. But it just doesn't look good when you can't get it done when you've got you know guys like Aaron Jones and you know they they had a couple of good receivers. I don't know if you guys know anything about them, at least one. Uh, I I do want to sh shout out Ashley here who says also congrats to Mrs. Crocky who, if I'm not mistaken, started her new RN job, right? Yeah, started uh, Monday. Nice. She's actually away right now, so I've been, I don't want to say stuck with the kids, but I've had the kids. It, it, <laughs> it'd be a handful. I saw your Dinner, yeah, baths, dude. everything. I saw your Instagram yeah. post where you're trying to get some work done for your, the uh, Locked On NFL Draft podcast, trying to watch some prospects, and you got kids running around make, building forts, pillow <sighs> fights. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> yeah. It's tough to study that film with kids around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there are some more questions that now I can't find because they're too deep because everyone's shouting out where they're where they're listening from. And I love seeing that all over the I world. Did, I did see someone ask if I was from Stockton. I'm 100 percent from Stockton. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. Real, north real side. north side. Yeah. Valverde Park. Yeah. Valverde Park. That's right. Uh, shoot. Oh, here it is. Uh, so when is Debo getting a new deal? What do you guys think? Oh, like, what's the date? If you had to guess, you had to you had to you had to, you had to pick a square mm -hmm. of dates when. Debo Samuel gets his new contract. I wouldn't be surprised if it happened right before camp. You know, just kind of the week before, maybe maybe Monday. You know, that just just kind of make sure he's happy heading into camp because um, you want to lock him up, right? I mean, you want to make sure he's he comes into camp, he's ready, he's happy, and you don't want to let this thing drag out throughout the season. So it's got to get done before the season starts. The twenty fifth, you're saying the day before training camp, the day before Niners report to training camp. Like if I had to pick an actual date, yeah, that, that sounds like the, the most likely. I'd say it's the 26th then, the day that they were <laughs> Oh, day. all right. Okay. So like he's he's in a hotel room and nobody knows it. Mm. It's like, oh, Debo's not here yet. Debo's not here yet. And he skips like the beef drill from day one, right? You remember day one is like that. There's always that test or that. You got um, that conditioning uh, test. Mm -hmm. I, hey, what, what I did was actually a great thing that I'm surprised more people don't incorporate into their workouts. They told us what the what the conditioning test was going to be. So at the end of all my field workouts, I would do the conditioning test. So by the time Smart. I reported to camp, it was like, oh, this is this is a breeze. Oh, and you had already done all the other, do they do it after practice too with the conditioning or is it just conditioning? It's just conditioning. Oh yeah, it's a breeze then if you're already doing your full workout and then you're doing the conditioning test. See, that's Smart Crocky. That's why I got Crocky as my co-host here on Lockdown 49 mm -hmm. because he's mm -hmm. smart like that. He had the answers to the test and he used them. Smart man. I like that. I like that. Afternoon of the 26th, or actually maybe mm -hmm. the 27th, because if they're reporting on the 26th, they probably don't hit the turf until the 27th. So then 27th afternoon, deal gets done. Debo misses the conditioning test, and then he's on the field on the 28th. 
I feel like teams do that on purpose, whereas like they just wait so that the guy can sign his contract and then run on the field. Like, oh, I just signed the contract, run on the field, yeah. everybody's excited. <laughs> I feel like they do it on purpose. Yeah. It's <laughs> a show. Like this, because the, the Warner deal, the Kittle deal kind of were done the week before. I feel like this one might drag out a little longer. So just that extra week, just to give us that, you know, the, the next day of content for Locked On 49ers too. Debo's not there. <laughs> oh no, what's going on? Is he not going to show up this year? You know, and, and then last second he comes in. And then there's a whole bunch of news back to back. Jimmy G trade, Debo Samuel signs, um, Deshaun Watson suspension, all that stuff. I mean, it's going to be a crazy time. And then all of a sudden we get to find out. I mean, that that first press conference, right, about the Trey Lance arm fatigue. They're going to get peppered with all these questions. And we better get a timeline on that. Okay, if there was arm fatigue, when was it? Who's talking? People in the building, are they gone? Because I, I have a feeling Kyle Shanahan's pretty pissed off right now with some ex-coaches who've been been yeah it's like just go yeah. like well, why why are you worried about what we got going on here right yeah you're, you're at a new place right do do your thing <laughs> it's that bitter x syndrome right it's like you want to take everybody down with you yeah that's true and like guys like welker like he didn't get a better job he got the same job somewhere else yeah uh scandrello got a got a a demotion, right? Because now he's uh, dating, I, but it's in college. Other Kyle Shanahan, like everybody else directly under Kyle Shanahan is getting better jobs in the NFL. Head coach track. Scandarello goes and leaves for, uh, instead of passing game coordinator or quarterbacks coach or whatever it was with the 49ers, and he goes to Philly. He's offensive coordinator. So that's, you're starting to climb the ladder there. Then he comes mm -hmm. back backwards. And now he's in the No, college. Broncos, he was offensive coordinator. Philly, he was offensive assistant or something. Then back to the 49ers, something along those lines. Oh, that's right, yeah. So Denver was offensive coordinator. Philly was quarterback's coach and, like, passing game coordinator, kind of like he was yeah. in San Francisco. Is that what it was? Yeah. He kind of bumped his head on the ceiling. Is is going down the other way now. He does have a good quarterback there, though. So if he's primed to maybe potentially set himself up for a head coaching job in the SEC, Will Levis has got to happen this year. Because I yeah, just watched film on him the other day, and I think he's a big-time prospect. And maybe that's was that was his end game. He's like, look, I want to go take some credit for a big time quarterback somewhere else and get out of the the shadow of Kyle Shanahan. Right, and their offense is already kind of similar to similar concepts. I don't want to say concepts, but a lot of twelve personnel, one back, two tight ends, a lot of play action, playing under center, turns it back to a defense. Like Will Levis did a lot of that off the film I was just watching. So it should be a seamless transition for him. Into Scangrillo's uh, offense, and uh, I'm expecting big time things. Uh, I feel like people have already said, "Oh no, it's, it's, it's C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young, the number one overall pick, is going to be one of those quarterbacks, if not, you know, Will Anderson, the edge rusher." But Will Levis, eh, I don't know. I'm not, that's the guy. That's the guy. I don't know. That's the guy. I'm, I'm interested to see what he does this year. Look, it's July 12th. Nobody's going to remember, and I'm glad you brought that up, Croc, because I, I saw C.J. Stroud. I saw Bryce Young play. Good prospects. But they're not slam dunk. Like, I'm not saying mm -hmm. that they're going to be guys that would have gone ahead of anybody that went in the first round in 2021, right? I watched, I, uh, I was just watching a tackle or a guard, uh, Paris Johnson at Ohio State. And obviously, as I'm watching the guard, I see passes and I'm just like, mm. not impressed. Yeah, and like, um, uh, Bryce Young is only six feet, like 195 or something, too, right? So he's going to get yeah. deemed for size. Mm. Uh, I love a good croc film breakdown when he does not impressed. Just like a little mm, like, nothing yeah, better. We'll than see. I, I, when I say not impressed, it's just it's just this is a great QB class because of right. Bryce Young and CJ Stroud. And I watch CJ Stroud, and I'm just like, if you just watch that game against Utah in the, in uh, in the postseason, amazing. But outside of that, I mean, you know, it's cool. He does some good things. You know, throws for a lot of yards. All right, it's time. It's time. We got to see the votes in the chat. Team mm. Peacock, Team Croc, Team Wink, who had the best all-time 49ers draft? We're going to talk about some snubs from that draft as well. Players that deserve to get, get taken that were not selected amongst those 75 players. First, I want to tell folks out there about the new special going on on the Locked On NFL channel, the top 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers at Bet Online. Which NFL stars move the betting lines the most? Starting July 18th, Locked On gives you the top 50 most valuable players in the NFL available July 18th on Locked On NFL. 
wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Okay. There's already people giving some, I'm going to put it on the screen so y'all can see it. Some people, uh, surprisingly, a couple votes that weren't for Team Peacock already in the all-time draft. All right, putting it on the screen for those of you who are watching us live on YouTube right now. Those are the teams. And uh, for those of you listening at home, can we go through this? Let's go through. I hope all of you that are listening at home remembered how the drafts went. Um, uh, first, really quick, and I'm so, I apologize to Wink if you're watching on YouTube. We got his face covered up by the, uh, the all-time 49ers draft. I can go over here a little bit. You can still see me, but Wink's going to get covered up. Um, Wink, what, what do you think? Who, who was the first, like, who are the snubs for you in the all-time San Francisco 49ers draft? I think there's some big ones, right? I mean, you're talking about guys like, you know, some some hardcore offensive linemen like Jeremy Newberry, right? I mean, you're talking about like, remember Aaron Boone? Like, who wouldn't want Aaron Boone on your football team? A guy that's just going to, you know, smack people around. Ahmad Brooks? Where's Ahmad Brooks on this list? Like, you know, we we had quite a few problems. Also, an older guy, too. You One of you guys should have taken as a running back because, I, you know, I took the, the best two there early. Ken Willard. Fourth all-time leading rusher for the 49ers. He just he yeah. played a long time ago, so you know, not everybody knows that guy. I mean, it's hard because I had the second all-time leading rusher already, and I had a Hall of Famer in Hugh McElhaney, and I had Ricky Waters. There just wasn't enough room for anybody else in the roster. I think my biggest snub was Don Griffin, cornerback. I was mm-hmm. I was thinking about taking Don Griffin. I ended up going with the short-timer, the one-year guy in Rod Woodson, but I really feel like Don Griffin was a little bit of a snub, and, and maybe Crocs should have taken him instead of Carlos Rogers. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, again, we're talking about Carlos Rogers, who was like all pro or, you know, Pro Bowl. He had that one year, six interceptions. Like Rob Woodson, he ain't had that type of year. And I don't know. I, yeah. I mean, either one of you should have taken Dave Baker. This dude played back in 59, 60. So just three seasons, right? 61. In 38 games, he had 21 picks. Like that's more than two. You know, that's like every other game. The guy's out there making a pick. So there's another guy that could have been a lockdown corner that, that we just we forgot about. What about the guy, uh, Wink, that you drafted the first time we did this when it was just you and I? You drafted Jeff Garcia to be your quarterback Mm -hmm. because I took both Montana and Young. You took Jeff Garcia. I took two quarterbacks. Neither one of them was Jeff Garcia after you guys took Montana and Young. So you got to feel like that's a little bit of a snub. Well, I mean, also, nobody took Colin Kaepernick. Let's take a look at what he did for the 49ers, right? I mean, dude, third all-time passer rating for the 49ers. You know, that's pretty solid. He's also 16th on the 49ers rushing list. Like, it's a really good quarterback that, you know, the 49ers have had a lot of really good quarterbacks. Y.A. Tittle's not on this list. Y.A. Tittle's a big one. I was just going to bring him up. Yeah, Y.A. Tittle. Jimmy G. A lot of people were telling me to just draft G- Jimmy W. That way I would <laughs> automatically have the W with that winning percentage, right, on Team Peacock. Uh, but I want Trey Lance. He has two NFL starts. We'll see how that looks in the future for me. Um, but, okay, let, it's time to get into – I just want to say this too, because I went heavy on defense. Like I, I don't think anybody would argue with me when I say I drafted the best defense and I got the mm-hmm. goat Jerry Rice to lead my offense. But <laughs> I want to say this. I want to say this too. I want to say this too. I have four of the top six receivers in 49ers history. I've got number one, I've got number three, I've got number four, and I've got number six in Rice, Clark, Gene Washington. And Vernon Davis. I've got four of the top six all-time leading receivers in yardage for the San Francisco 49ers on this roster with Hall of Fame snub in and the only guy to ever lead the league in passing as a San Francisco 49er. Did it three times and he won an MVP. John Brody is the quarterback. So don't sleep on the offense too. That's all I'm saying. You want to talk about offense. I got Joe Montana behind him. Frank Gore and Roger Craig. Debo Samuels split out. George Kittle. Brent Jones. Come on. There's no way you, any of these defenses could handle all those guys. Hey, like, I, hey. I, I love what I did on offense. Winky, someone someone in the chat said that your team would win in the 60s. I agree, but they're not winning right now. Or whatever era it's, we're it's playing all this about, game. It's all about best at the era, right? I mean, yeah, obviously these guys are what, 80, 90 years old right now. Of course they're not winning right now. Come My on. team will win in any era. If, if your, uh, your uh, clubhouse didn't implode. <laughs> that, that part right i mean to alone man right at the top Croc's so, not winning more than one game i saw it <laughs> no, I, no yeah. i'm winning two after that it might get a little ugly but. okay 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 Croc. how what what is your team going to do to beat my team well first of all i mean look at who i have at quarterback he's dynamic 
He has good arm. He's one of the most accurate quarterbacks to ever play the game when he retired. I believe he retired with the highest uh, passer rating in NFL yep. history. So I have Steve Young. We know what he was. And then, like, who is he throwing the ball to? He's throwing the ball to Terrell Owens. And Quan Bowden, who had multiple thousand-yard uh, seasons with the 49ers. And my third receiver is John Taylor. And then if I want to throw in my fourth receiver, that's Brandon Lloyd, but he's just there for spectacular catches. Matter of fact, I have a wild card for y'all. Deion Sanders, he pl played both ways with the Dallas Cowboys. This is a guy who has mm -hmm. both way capability as well. Also, punt return duty. So, I mean, just my weapons there. And then the running back that I was able to get, Garrison Hurst. I believe only Frank Gore had a single season that was better than Garrison Hurst. And then I said, you know what? Let me go get a fullback because, you know, I'm going to run power at times. So let me go get, you know, probably best fullback in 49ers history. All right. Got him. And then I went and said, you know what? Sometimes Garrison Hurst might need a break. So let me go with Charlie Garner, who had a great year with the 49ers as well. So, I mean, I mean, my offense is crazy. My old line. Come on, Trent Williams. Come on, man. Wallace. I got the, the first ever 49er pick in the history of the game who playing both ways. I mean, my, 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 my team is really silly. And then don't, don't even talk about the back end. All right, you talked about your defense. Yeah, you got a terrific front. That's solid and all. But my back end is crazy. It's hard Pro to argue that. Charlie Garner that. wasn't scaring anybody in 1999. He's definitely not scaring Charles Haley and Nick Bosa and Patrick Willis and Navarro Bowman and DeForest Buckner and Justin Smith. By the way, you know who is scared of the guys I just mentioned is Steve Young. And you know how his career ended? Ooh. Yeah, I, I don't remember. That happened to your guy, so I almost yeah. don't want this game to happen. You know what I mean? Because I don't want I don't want anybody to get hurt out there. Because no matter what you got going on, on the outside, he's not going to have time to get the ball to those guys. Nah, and running that was a, that was a free <laughs> blitzer. Aeneas Williams was a free runner off the edge. We don't got no mm -hmm. free runners off the edge right here. All right, we're picking that up. Lawrence, you don't have Lawrence Phillips to miss the to miss picking up <laughs> whiff, that block. Huge whiff. I didn't even whiff. touch on my defensive line with whiff. Bryant Young. What's the Come argument? On. Bryant Young, Dana Stubblefield, Cedric Hardman over 100 sacks. Yeah, yeah. come on. There's not going to be any issues here. Keena Turner. I like my, my linebackers as well. Ken Norton Jr. Yeah, please. You know, another linebacker that we left off too who would have been solid, Gary Plummer. I really liked Gary Plummer when he played. Uh, Gary Plummer was nearly one of my selections late. I was looking at Matt Mill and Gary Plummer, and I thought, you know, I need to go with a little bit more of a uh, more of a new school Look, I wanted to be able to win in the modern era because I had a lot of old time players. So I went with Rod Woodson late, went with the second quarterback and Trey Lance. So I'm going to run the four two five out there. I'm just going to stay in nickel because I got such monsters that now I don't need to go base. And then I got to be able to match up with with the receivers crocs thrown out there at me. And I can still match up with your two tight ends, too. So, I mean, just, nobody's going to move the ball on me. So I'm not worried about it. I'm going to put up points with with my offense and, and Jerry Rice is going to get his. You know, he is. I feel like Joe we're, Montana we're definitely might moving find the ball. We're going to spread y'all yeah. out. <laughs> we're going to spread y'all out, and you you can only rush four, and that's going to slow down the rest, especially with my offensive line, especially with my tackles on the outside. I mean, come on now. People forgot about out. Trey Lance. He's not even my starter. You wait five years, and 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 how good can my team be if Trey Lance becomes that dude, right? <laughs> That's a pick. Mm -hmm. for the you get them at their we'll peak. Back. It really matters. Trey Lance hasn't hit his peak yet. I mean, just what an amazing franchise when you look at all these names and the fact that we left off such fantastic players as well. They didn't even make our top 75 here. That's crazy. You're muted. Sorry, I'm, I'm muted there. Um, it's pretty amazing that we were able to go 75 deep and it wasn't that hard to find really mm -hmm. good players, really impactful players. We were drafted Hall of Famers. Uh, I drafted a Hall of Famer in round 20. You know what I mean? Like it, it's crazy that that this franchise has had such great players. And I've seen some other articles, you know, slow point of the offseason, some other articles from uh, around the Internet. And, uh, you know, some teams are like, who, who's the all time best, you know, players from so-and-so franchise i'm like god these guys wouldn't even this is your mm -hmm. your tenth best player ever i don't know if he'd have got drafted in our top 75 <laughs> you know what i mean so it's crazy and, and and that's why there's so many people in the live chat right now that's why there's so many people that listen to locked on 49ers and love this franchise because dang it's a pretty cool franchise uh historically a lot of great players and uh and it's a fun franchise to cover and plus we're just so good at at podcasting that people got to listen anyway
Right. Who drafted like. Ricky Williams? Somebody put Ricky Williams with a question mark. Some, one of us drafted. I mean, it wasn't me, but. Oh, Ricky Waters. I drafted Ricky Waters. I mean, Ricky Waters. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got. I would have drafted Ricky Williams, too. Good player. Yeah, I got Ricky Waters. Oh, dude, dynamic out of the backfield. He'd be trouble for you guys. I got a three-headed monster at running back. Yeah, I got Ricky can't even compare to my two, though. I got two Hall of Famers. I got Ricky Waters. Did you just go psh, at Frank Gore and Roger Craig? Psh. I mean, they're fine. They're good. They're great players. <laughs> but they're running fine. backs. Dude, running backs are not going to win you any. Roger games. Craig reinvented the position, man. Hundred catches. He, he did. And you know who's going to be all up in his business? Patrick Willis, Navarro Bowman, Ronnie Lott. Maybe. I can't argue that. I'm not the yeah. eraser for any of your games, guys. You guys are erased. <laughs> Might be low. Hey, listen, our, our guy in the chat right now, uh, Jag, he says, Croc has great corners. Jimmy Johnson was a great corner, great man-to-man cover, Hall of Famer. I have Jimmy Johnson and Deion Sanders mm-hmm. on the outside mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with Merton Hanks and Deshaun Goldson on the back end, two guys who took the ball away. I mean, Merton Hanks at a really high level. And, and then I had a nickel. Who was my nickel? Gosh, I had so many great defensive backs. I forgot. Carlos Rogers. Was. You drafted. Uh, no, you Rogers. drafted four corners. No, but somebody the, before Carlos. Uh, oh, Dwight Hicks. Dwight Hicks. Dwight Hicks. Yeah, Dwight Hicks. Like, come on, man. <laughs> Stupid coverage. <laughs> Stupid I mean, that's coverage. All right. That's all right. But Dwight Hicks isn't covering Jerry Rice. He doesn't have to. I got Dion. I got Jimmy Johnson. I mean. You think I'm, gonna, you think I'm just going to let Jerry Rice sit there? And, and line up in front of Dion all day, I'm going to move him around. I'm going to hand him the ball Debo Samuel style. Jerry Rice was the OG at getting those reverses, right? I'm going to run, I'm going to run him in the slot because I got speed on the outside with Gene Washington, and I got Dwight Clark on the outside on the other side. And then I can just hit you over the middle if you want to be worried about the guys on the outside. If you got too much coverage over Jerry Rice, you want to bracket him, I'm coming out of the backfield. I got Vernon Davis, the tight end, to run down the seam. I mean, I'm going to put points up on the board, but nobody's going to score on me. So that's that's I'm scoring. Bad. No. Someone someone put Goldson question mark. Yes, Deshaun Goldson. Way overrated. That was a bad pick by Croc. All pro? What are you talking about? All pro? How many picks did he have in like a three year span? Taking the ball away? He was super hammer. Like you you don't even like you throw the ball in the area, like you're getting knocked out. Like, come yeah. on, man. He, he reminds me a lot of uh Ronnie Lott if he didn't hit as hard and couldn't cover as well. <laughs> 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 no, I love Goldson. Yeah. Goldson, Goldson was awesome. Uh, I can't hate on any of the picks in, in any of the no. guys that made this team. Uh, Ray Brown, he was on my yeah. list of, one of the guards. I was I was going to take him. I, I was wrestling with that one. I went with the I went old school with Howard Mudd, but Ray Brown is a good one. Wendell Tyler, another good name brought up in the chat. Uh, that that was a uh, that was a really good one. Hey, That's here's a good question because I see someone asking, and there have been people that ask this on social media as well. Who would our coaches be? So real quick, we'll draft coaches. Okay. Peacock, mm-hmm. we'll go in the same order. Peacock has first pick. I got second pick. Peacock, oh, uh, you got the, uh, I mean, Wink got first. Excuse me. Wink, Winky got first pick. If we're doing the uh, if we're doing the the snake, then I would be up next. Yeah, that's in true. Twenty six. But this is unfair because if I draft Bill Walsh, it's game over. No, it's not. It's over. It's over. Over. It's already yeah. over. But if I get Bill Walsh, it's over. Over because. Uh, First of all, Jerry Rice, we already know what he looked all like. All right, so take Bill Walsh out of the equation. Now now who? That, no that's, Bill that's, Walsh. That's a way better question is who's the second coach. That was right. Insulted. You go Seifert, who just kind of like took over, you know, and kind of guided the guys that were already great to another Super Bowl. You go with Mooch, mm-hmm. a guy who kind of did it from the ground up. You know, I mean, look what Harbaugh did. Like, you got to you gotta take also a look at what Kyle's doing right now. Like, I'd love to see Kyle with my offense, with all those running backs and the tight ends. Oh, man, he, he would have crazy offensive schemes. Well, I think for sure Croc's team needs to have Harbaugh because the personality. Because the team's right. not lasting long anyway. So just get Max <laughs> just get Max <laughs> ass out of every single player for the short time that they're going to be together, right? Yeah. He was uh, able to hold it together for a little bit. So. The sun just peeked through the window. It's crushing me right oh, now. Oh, look at that. Yeah, you're all lit up. Yeah. It's like a, that's Bill Walsh from the heavens. He's like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it wouldn't be fair. <laughs> that's what that, that, that sign means. Um, Shanahan, Mariucci, Harbaugh. Seifert. He won a Seifert. Super Bowl. Seifert. Those, yeah. those are the four that are up for the next spot. Right? After Walsh. Wait, wait, wait. Where's Singletary on that list? <laughs> He's got his pants down somewhere trying to prove it. <laughs> nice. 
Daniel um, Daniel in the chat said Crocs team needs Singletary. Yeah, there you go. He would, be, he would have to be linebackers coach. Stare people <laughs> down with those eyes. Uh, do, do, is Kyle is, has Kyle Shanahan gotten to the point where you take him next? I might go Mariucci. Yeah, I, I think depending on who you who you like like I have Steve Young. If Steve Young was with Kyle Shanahan, how many Super Bowls mm. would he have right now? I like, right? I like I like Steve Young with Kyle Shanahan. I like with Mooch. Uh, it's tough though because you it's hard to forget what he did with Detroit, right? Well, and it's the same with um, with Seifert with the Panthers. Yeah, good point. Good call. Would you take? Would you just take Mike Holmgren? I know. I know he wasn't a head coach. I'd promote him. Yeah, I'd just promote him because I would probably take Holmgren second after Walsh. <laughs> Proved later he was a great head coach and he was already a good offensive coordinator with the 49ers. I think he um, found it right there. Like Montana, maybe with Seifert because Montana's. I just picture Montana is already. You know, your team is kind of like they don't need that much coaching, right? I feel like right. your team is, is going to be pretty set. That's a good call. John Brody, if you get John Brody, he didn't have the benefit of Walsh. John Brody with Walsh, I mean, it's all over with my team for sure. I, I might go Mariucci. I think Harbaugh is a better fit for Team Crocker, and you go C for, for Team Winkler. And Kyle Shanahan's left out. Kyle Shanahan's got to go win some big. Uh, big, big Harbaugh is not, a, I mean, I guess it would be a good fit, but I want to utilize my receivers. So I don't know. Harbaugh didn't win anything either. He he coached Anquan Bolden. He did. There you go. Uh, last last one. Uh, were any of you guys close to drafting Randy Moss? Because no, I almost no. drafted Randy Moss mm-hmm. late, just because even old washed Randy Moss. I wanted to be able to say I got Jerry Rice and Randy Moss on the same team. He was still a threat. Like you, you had yeah. to you know account for him if you were a defensive coordinator. But you just look at the numbers, and you just can't justify it. Yeah, yeah, the numbers just weren't there. Even though he probably would have been dangerous enough to be the number three guy, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, good stuff. We got to get out of here. We are over time. Appreciate everybody for jumping in on the live chat. Let me get this thing off the screen here so you can see Winkler. And we'll just put one more comment on the screen that... Let me guess, that Peacock had the best team? Yeah. We'll see we... <laughs> yeah. Most of them are saying that anyway, but yeah, here we go. Oh, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I go see that. I think uh, he's right about that. Anyway, all right. Good stuff. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'm going to put another vote up out on uh, on Twitter with the list of, of our teams and, and see what people think. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I had a great time doing it, and I had a great time doing this podcast with my buddies, Croc and Wink. Wink, thanks for joining us here on another Wednesday. My pleasure. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen. Croc and I, back tomorrow right here, Locked On 49ers. See you.